So in the 1990s, London Pirate Radio on the rave scene, we're gonna touch upon that, which was belt drive, a lot of finger, a lot of work that you had to do on that turntable to keep and sustain a mix, right? Bring it back in, introducing its sound system style, teasing the audience, teasing the radio, and culture and DIY ethos. So pirate radio and raves were often DIY endeavors. Yo, to test it then, it's yours truly madness KMA back once again, this time round to have part three in the series of Inside the Mind of a DJ. So on part three episode of Inside the Mind of a DJ, I was just pondering about the years of transition in sound DJ equipment that we've used as the box standards, the only go-tos that we had from pirate radio days, from the turntables to the mixer, the type of sound that we was looking for and the equipment had to go hand in hand. The evolution of DJ equipment uh, from the garage 1990s, London pirate radio days and rave scene to the current standard is fascinating journey. For the geek heads, it's a fascinating journey that highlights technological advancement, changes in DJing styles, and the influence of the music industry. So let's take it back to the original golden era of DJing, pirate radio, rave scene, period, the UK. So in the 1990s, London Pirate Radio on the rave scene, we're gonna to touch upon that with the go-to equipment that was of that time. Turntables, we can only speak about this staple of the decades and decades that it's been going out for, is the Techniques, which is today's pioneer. See, we had the Techniques SL1200s and the 1210s, Mark I, Mark II, they're all the same, really did the same thing. Series of turntables were the cornerstone of DJ setups in the 1990s. Let's put it like that. Facts. In particular, in the underground rave scene and pirate radio stations, uh, these direct drives were prized for their durability. You see, I myself learned how to mix uh, when I was early teens on Sound Labs belt drive. The difference is, with belt drive, it's loose. You have to use a pitch control, but it won't move in time. It takes time to have momentum. And then you've had to use your um, hand skills to, you know, finesse the mix to get it in time. But it me meant that you was doing stuff all the time. You're always touching and, and you'd have to be wary of the strings or something, Whee! or whatever it was, or you're slowing it down too much, it would slow down because it wasn't have, the belt drives like Techniques does and did. And they were the reliable source that stood the testaments of time. Facts, many people like myself still have their turntables from Techniques for like 30 plus years and they're still going strong. I've never ever serviced my decks and they're still good to go. Well, apart from that leap, that one's got a funny earthing on it, but don't worry about it, you know. The precise pitch control, uh, making them ideal for beat matching and scratching. So the pitch control on the techniques was something unique. When it came about, and we finally got our chance to get onto the techniques, the big boy decks at the time, um, it made sense because we went to school with Sound Lab, and that's the equipment that we used, which was belt drive, a lot of finger, a lot of work that you had to do on that turntable to keep and sustain a mix, right? Uh, so when we got to the it's almost pros, semi-pros already, because you worked on something less um, of strength when it came to the techniques, the daddy of turntables from back in the days. Vinyl records. DJs would um, primarily use vinyl records. That was a thing, right? From seven inch to 12 inch, 10 inch dub plates. That was our thing. That was our USBs of the time. That was our hard drives, the physical vinyl that you had to take, that plastic, that acetate, that wax. Digging through crates uh, of vinyl to find rare tracks that was part of the DJ culture, a big part of it for what you still had, what you accumulated over the years, the struggles that it was to purchase those vinyl, to go to the record shops physically 
doing those things is a lot different to just receiving an email. Techniques like scratching, beat juggling, back spins, and other tricks that you have to do physically with the actual turntable. So big up techniques because they have made the ultimate record player uh, that has gone through decades and decades of time. And like I said, like many others may agree, they've had theirs like mine for well over 30 years and I've never actually serviced it before. Mixers. Now, mixers back in the DJ days of pirate radio in London and up and down the UK and, and around the world because obviously it was the same go-tos that people went through. Now, everyone would know from the pirate game, good old MRT60. See, the MRT60 gave us versatility, whereas it had that bit extra than other mixers, including a graphics equalizer that, for those of us from sound system culture, is what we would use to take out the bass, and you would do the thing, bring it back in, introducing its sound system style, teasing the audience, teasing the radio, and you know that, that's what you was doing to introduce your advanced DJ skills, where others might just be just one, two, waiting for the tune to start, waiting for the tune to almost outro the last 32 bars and then they mix it in the next tune. You know, big up you if that's your formula, but for certain DJs like myself wanted to advance in sound and make it sound very much sound system culture and uh, bring that energy on the radio as well as Clubland. But the other go-tos was mixers like Allen and Heath, <laughs> the X-Zone series, Vestax PMC series and the Newmark were very much common mixers back in those days. I mean, fast forward into now, and even when I've gone through my DJ controllers and you know some of my story to where I am today as a content creator rather than just a DJ, um, I've still got my new mark which is still going strong that's my first ever controller that i got and it's still going strong to this day people has even commented and said oh i see your little um dj controller there in the back the new mark yeah blah 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 bring that out drop a live mix or live stream i've been using that one for years and then when i did transfer over to pioneer which is today's go-to and decades uh, as the go-to company the flagship which is their amazing equipment but i'll get back to that later on so these mixers were typically simple with some of them having eq controls because not all of them did Crossfaders, yes, of course. And sometimes basic effects, when they started coming in, you know, just a little bit of filter, a bit of flange, something like this, or filters. Focus was on smooth transitions between tracks and maintaining the energy in a radio show, in a radio booth, or even in Clubland. It was always about the same pattern that went along. It was just different DJs had their own techniques of what their style and pattern was. Some of the bigger DJs uh, would have used external effects processes like the Alesis 3630 compressor uh, to add dynamic effects to their mixes. Some DJs also employed samplers and drum machines to layer additional sounds to their DJ performance, which is amazing. Culture and DIY ethos. So pirate radio and raves were often DIY endeavors. DJs were set up in basements, warehouses, or secret locations, fire chutes, tower blocks, sometimes using homemade modified equipment. There's always an engineer of the radio station that knew how to make something or had a skill set to make you sound more advanced than the other station. But the focus was more on the raw energy and the music rather than the polish of the setup. And if you only would have seen some of this equipment that we was working on back in those pirate days and the surroundings that we was in, the locations, so crazy. But it was everything to pirate radio and it was everything. Still today, they just don't know it. So let's get into the evolution 
to the 2000s and beyond. The Pioneer CDJs, 1000s and the 2000s, and other variation models that came along uh, later on. In the late 1990s and the early 2000s, Pioneer introduced a CDJ series, which was the phenomenal change from turntable DJs, vinyl DJs. It got to the stage where it was always turntables. That's what you know, that's the trademark, that's the equipment that we use. And then you started going to clubs and realizing they ain't got the turntables no more, so you're still carrying records for what reason? But smart DJs like myself burnt some CDs off, so I had those there with me as well as the original analog versions of the vinyl. So I learned to adapt very quick to embrace new technology because it was taken over. It was a gradual process, but when you started to see it in the clubs and you get up there and you go, there's no turntables. The turntables? By that time, you should really know what time it is. So the CDJ series from Pioneer revolutionized the game. It revolutionized DJing, period. The CDJ 1000s and later the CDJ uh, 2000s became the industry standard, allowing DJs to play CDs and then eventually digital files via USB. The CDJ jog wheels mimicked the feel of vinyl decks, making it easier for vinyl DJs to transition or well, most of them anyway. Then we had to become digital library keepers. DJs could now carry thousands of tracks on a USB stick and a hard drive rather than crates of vinyl, which allowed for more versatility and spontaneity in clubland and on radio. So when it comes down to Pioneer, I, I embrace the technology that they came forward with. Don't get me wrong, there was the new mark long mixer like that the cds that you know the cd mixers from them but that was like i myself like i said i've still got my techniques 1210s to this day well over 30 years old they're still going strong however you gotta move with the times and technology i was someone to embrace it because it's only going to take us forward and when you used to have forward thinking anyway, to think technology that you see in movies and all these kind of things, it's gonna become reality if it ain't already. And when equipment started to advance, you had to move with the times as a DJ. So when you play around with the equipment, especially with Pioneer, which was the digital version of techniques, basically. And like I said, respect to techniques as always, um, but Pioneer highly, highly rate and respect their equipment. Now, I haven't got a sponsors from Pioneer. I'd love one. Pioneer, holler at me if you want to sponsor me some DJ equipment. You know, I was very technical in my DJ and format, styles and skills, unorthodox sound effects. I need all of that. Pitching, cues, beat matching, rearrange, all of that. Pioneer, big up yourself. If you want to sponsor a man, a Pirate Chronicle series, ask somebody, say Madness KMA, they'll say, yeah, hook him up. Uh, I'll still say big up to Newmark though, because Newmark is still going strong as my first um, ever DJing controller, which works for me. Yes, it's a bit beaten up. I had to put it to the side and put it in storage at one point when I purchased my first Pioneer DDJ 1000, which is the controller. And it was the fully advanced one with the uh, four channels and everything like that. However, I outgrew a lot what was going on with radio and rave scenes. So I chose a different path. And basically there I am. I still, am I still a DJ? Yes, I am. I will never stop being a DJ. I see DJing as like a driver. Once you get your license, you're fully qualified, but you get good drivers and you get bad ones. But once you've got the license to drive, i.e. DJing, you never forget it. If you had your own skill set and mastered that techniques and nobody still could do what you did today, then you're a winner. And I will always be a DJ at heart. However, going out there uh, with the equipment that there is today, I'll still do what I always did, which was advanced as well as many other DJs, as my colleagues and peers uh, in different genres will say the same thing. You know, the skill set that you carry through can still work with modern day equipment. But if you want to sponsor a man, Newmark, yes, Newmark was one of my greatest DJ controllers. And I've still got it here to date, which I use for my live mixes or um, radio guest shows that I do. So like I'm saying, we had the rise of the controllers as DJing became more digital 
uh, MIDI controllers like the Pioneer DDJ series. An amazing piece of equipment. Why did I get rid of mine? Well, I went through different transitions into becoming a content creator and I had less time for DJing. And I outgrew it because I was more focused on doing this on YouTube as a YouTuber, content creator, Pirate Chronicle series host. Yours truly, Madness KMA. Please do subscribe, like, share, and all that great stuff.